Welcome to Ozzy's Masterclass on how to build wildly affordable computers that you may or may not need. You probably won't need them. So if you guys are new here, my name is Ozzy and I show you guys how to save money and build affordable computers. I mean, I have $25 gaming computers on my channel and although that's more of a rarity, building computers for as low as 50 bucks isn't insanely uncommon for me and it doesn't have to be for you either. I'm no expert by any means, but my five years of computer building has taught me a few things. Now, there are a few disclaimers before I begin. One, I use the term build lightly because you're really not gathering all seven to eight different parts of the computer and putting it together. You're picking up a base and then just upgrading and changing things as you go along. Secondly, building super cheap computers does depend on your location. Some countries do not offer low prices for computer components, and I'm really just speaking to my experience here in Atlanta, Georgia. Some of these tips might transfer over to other regions, and some may not, just the nature of the beast. And lastly, you might notice that the word gaming is not found anywhere in the title. That is on purpose. I have to make sure I say that because there is a big difference. You'll definitely find videos online of people building very powerful computers for very low prices, like sub 100, that is not the norm, so keep that in mind. If you're still here after all of those disclaimers and you wanna build an HTPC-esque computer that can play older titles, keep watching. If you guys want affordable hardware and want to help a great cause, then definitely check out shopucw.com. They sell desktops, laptops, and computer parts at great prices to help you on your budget build journey. This month, 10% of all purchases will go to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. With the code OZCARES, you can save an additional $10 off your purchase too. So head over to shopucw.com to get started. Now tip number one, and this one's pretty obvious, but you must buy secondhand parts. 99.9999% of the time, even in markets outside of the United States, this will only be possible if you go for used components. For example, if you go to Amazon and you look for the cheapest brand new video card, the GT710 is probably going to come up. If you want to save another 10 to $11, you can get it used for like $24, $25. On the contrary, if you go to a site like eBay and you look for a used older card, say a 6670, you are going to get more than double the performance of the 710 for the same price, about $24 to $25. Now this is over the price I would personally pay for the card, but it just shows that you can get better performance if you go in the secondhand market. The one caveat is that you are losing out on longevity, but computer components generally last a long time especially if you take care of them. There are a few components that I don't recommend going used if you can help it, and I'll have a list of those on screen right now. One of the biggest ones is storage devices. Data is very important, and you don't want to increase the risk of data loss just to save a few extra dollars. Not only does this save you money, but it also helps the environment too. E-waste is a big issue, and by reusing old components, you are contributing to a healthier world so it's really a win-win situation my second tip is check your local deals so most of the best deals that you find will not be available to everyone through an online retailer now you should always check online retailers because of the chance of getting a good deal but if you only check that you are doing yourself a disservice so make sure you go to sites like facebook marketplace offer up craigslist and let go if you want more and better deals, especially if you live in or near a big city. When looking for parts, you should try a variety of search terms such as computer, desktop, Dell, HP, Lenovo, AMD, Radeon, GTX, and a combination of those. Common misspellings is also something you should look for. There's actually a site called Fat Fingers that gives you an aggregate of eBay listings with misspellings that have no bids or very little bids because people can't find them. So misspellings actually can help you find really cheap components. The third tip is a little bit uncommon, but if you can utilize it, it's a gold mine. Check trash places, areas, I don't dumpsters, I guess, and check e-recycling slash e-waste centers. 
I don't like to use the term dumpster diving because that has kind of a, a grimy connotation to it. I also don't like to use the word grimy, so I don't know why I use that, but households will throw away old computers once they've upgraded, not knowing that that computer has a lot of life left in it. This one is rare, but once it works, it works. I've been doing this for about five years and it's only happened to me on two occasions with three total computers. And only one of them was modern enough for gaming. Somebody threw away a computer with an i7, like six gigs of RAM and a GTX 470. It was collecting dust, but it obviously still could be used for different projects. Now, just to be clear, I don't advocate dumpster diving. I, I don't really know the legalities behind it, but if you have friends or family who have old computers, that's a good place to start. E-recycling centers are a completely different breed and vary a lot depending on location. As a matter of fact, some of them can't even sell parts to you depending on where you're located. Now there is an amazing thread on the Linus Tech Tips forum by Circle Tech who actually met at LTX, really cool dude, that explains the entire process of trying to buy computer parts from an e-waste or an e-recycling center. The TLDR is physically visit as many e-waste centers in your area and ask if you can buy computer components on the off chance, emphasis on off chance, it's pretty slim that they'll say yes. Accept whatever that they will give you and try to build that trust. Once enough rapport is built between you and the seller, you will have access to phenomenal deals like $2 power supply kind of deals. I'm pretty sure this is the only way for you to build a modern gaming computer for 50 bucks or less without starting off with a pre-built or base computer beforehand. I've tried this once and I picked up an i3 for $5, so it wasn't the best deal and your mileage may vary, but when it hits, it really hits. TJ from Tech FTP recently found his own e-recycling guy and he snagged some awesome deals as well, so it can definitely work even today. The fourth tip uses a calculated risk and that is buying broken or old computer components. When a seller assumes that a component is broken, it completely plummets in price. Occasionally, that item has a simple solution, and if you know how to solve it, just based on the listing and talking with the seller, you have yourself an amazing deal. If the component is broken beyond repair, or you actually don't know how to fix it like you thought, then you're in the hole, albeit it's usually something not too drastic. In my experience, this has mostly applied to video cards and desktops. Earlier this year, I bought a $10 GTX 760 from Facebook Marketplace. The seller said that it black screened and I was like, okay, maybe I could give this a shot. I tried a series of software solutions to try and fix the card, but unfortunately nothing worked and I was in the hole 10 bucks, but for only $10, it was a calculated risk that was worth it to me. If you're comfortable troubleshooting and you're okay spending money that you may not get back, then this might be a good option for you. And my last and final tip is learn to haggle. This is so important. Even beyond just buying, like buying a house, you should learn how to negotiate. You should learn how to, you should learn how to negotiate for anything. <laughs> like even if you're not buying something, you should learn how to negotiate. That's just an important skill. So I'm actually, I'm going to put an asterisk by this uh, tip and say haggle slash learn how to negotiate for later on in life. For this case specifically, you may not be saving a lot of money absolutely, but relatively, if you're trying to build a computer for 50 bucks, saving $5 is already 10% of your budget. That's a big amount. So whenever you see a listing, always, always haggle by giving a fair, capitalized, bolded, fair price that's lower than the listed price. Another good tip that I actually learned from, I think Brian from Tech yes City and Chris from Christopher Yee, is if you offer a lower price that might be on the edge of them not accepting it, you could say, hey, I'm free now, I have cash, I'm willing to come and get the component, does XPM today work? If you do that, then you're taking initiative, they're more likely to actually sell you the component if they don't have anybody else lined up. So with all the tips out of the way, let's move on to application. I want to put all of these tips in action and show you guys how you can theoretically build a computer for only $50 using all of these tricks. Here it is. So what I want to try to do here is build a 50-ish computer, it doesn't have to be gaming, but 50-ish computer 
using the four tips that I shared you guys with earlier. And we're gonna to try to do this in under an hour. Of course, this video is not gonna be a full hour. I'm gonna cut bits and pieces, but just wanna make sure we have our timer set. It starts now. Let's see what we can do. Computers, these are not computers, laptops. Oh, nope, that is a router. Okay, Dell Vostro 200, 35 bucks. That looks pretty good. GTS 450, that looks pretty good too. Studio or Core 2 Quad. That's, uh, I think that's, that's good enough because we're not looking for a gaming PC, we're just looking for it. So let's search uh, GTX. We need uh, storage and then we need hopefully a video card because I don't want to use the onboard one. Ooh, a 660, 20 bucks. I wonder if that's 20 for each or 20 total. Let's see if there's a... Uh, there's anything else we can look for. We need a power supply. If we can find a power supply. If, uh, oh, 20 bucks. What? Uh, the other one. Oh, okay. This is a even better one for 20, 25. If we can get this for 20, that would be even better. It's only been like seven minutes. Like we're doing, we're doing really, really well. Okay. So $50 PC in an hour. So we have the Dell Vostro 200 RAM Core 2. GTX 660 X2 for $20 total, I'm guessing. Sell one for 30. We have a EVGA 400. We'll do the 430. We can, it's listed at 25, I think that's fair. So 25 for that. Hard drives for sale. Ooh. Okay, this I could totally do. So a 500 gig hard drive for 10 bucks or we can get two 320 gigs for 10 bucks i'll do a single 500 so we have 500 gig so del vostro 200 dollars right i mean not 200 dollars. we can get it for 30 bucks i'm guessing gtx 660 if this is still available two for 20 we have the EVG evga 400 watt power supply if this is still available we could probably ask 15 and then the hard drives we can get two 320 gigs for 10 bucks or one 500 for 10 bucks and they're in pretty good shape and that's another 10 bucks so if we add that all together that is 30 minus 10 which is 20 plus 15 which is 35 plus 10 which is 45 so this is actually 45 dollars and that gives us a working computer that can play a lot of games pretty good and we've only spent 15 minutes doing this so we did that in 15 minutes ladies and gents as you guys can see with a little bit of foreknowledge you can build yourself an affordable computer for as low as $50. I wanna just reiterate the disclaimers from the beginning. I understand that this is dependent on your location and build is more of a loose term here because you're really just buying the pre-built and then upgrading the computer parts. Nonetheless though, if you guys are able to apply any of these, then please hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, oh my gosh, Twitch, I think at OzTalksHW and send me computers that you guys have built for cheap. Either you're currently working on it now, you're planning on it, or it's been built. I don't care how old it is. I love seeing that kind of stuff. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know. If you liked it, leave a like, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.